Hey, everybody. Welcome to Coffee Chat. Today, our topic is Mission United. We are so thrilled to have all of you with us. The purpose of these meetings is that they're short, informative meetings where we're going to give you a brief overview of one of our in-house programs. And we're going to share the results and how they're really making an impact in the community. And hopefully this will give you an insight into what we're doing. And you'll feel really great that you know that in this case, our veterans and our active service members and their families are being taken care of in our community. Is anybody on the call um, a veteran at all or active service member? Tony and Danielle, of course. Um, I wanna thank you for your service. Um, our veterans and our active service members are so valuable to all of our communities and to our country. And I have the very fortunate opportunity to work with people who are truly passionate about what we do here at United Way and our programs and making sure that everyone gets the help that they need. And so what I really want to do is introduce Danielle Brown, who is our Mission United Program Manager, and Linda Hafner, who is our 211 um, Vice President. And they're going to share our Mission United program with you today. So Danielle, I'm going to let you take control and take it away. Good morning. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. I'm really excited to uh, share a little bit about uh, Mission United. I don't get to do this a whole, like a whole often, um, but uh, it's really nice to uh, meet faces and actually talk about our program. Um, Mission United is a community collaboration that is integrated within our 211 network. Anytime a veteran uh, active duty military or their families um, have a need and um, have a health or social service need, they can call 211 or 239-433-3900 and they can speak with a community resource specialist. Uh, all of our calls are assessed to determine if someone in the household served in the military. Um, we do this just Depending on the era served or the discharge status, even the gender, some veterans don't necessarily identify as veterans. So when we ask that question, has anybody in your household served in the military, this ensures we're capturing all our veteran callers. Um, during that 2-1-1 call, uh, the veteran is assessed on their need and hardship and their provided resources. Sources. Uh, a follow-up is then completed in 10 days, uh, and that's just to determine if their need was met. And at any point during those calls, if the community resource specialist learns that that veteran is struggling to access those resources in the community, they refer them over to our Mission United team. Now, our team compri is comprised of four uh, veterans. We all have lived experience, um, and this lived experience allows us to provide uh, veteran care coordination, and that that's through peer support, resource navigation, and advocacy. So myself and two uh, additional veterans provide that care coordination, and then we have a, re a veteran resource specialist that continuously works to update our database and find new resources to improve our database. We have some amazing sponsors, uh, Benita Anita Bay Veterans Council, Military Officers Association of America, the Farmar Fund, and Sandcap Rotary Trust Fund that support us um, so we can do this mission. So just to give you a little bit of history as to how um, Mission United was formed, uh, in 2016, the Military Officers Association of America started an initiative in Lee County, and it was called Community Blueprint. This was a round table of agencies that came together um, to discuss different things like needs within the veteran community, navigation of resources and gaps in services. As a result of that initiative, Mission United was formed in 2017. And this allowed our community to better be able to coordinate those referrals and connections to those veteran resources. And it also provided us that single point of entry for veterans. Uh, in 2018, we began hosting our Mission United Stakeholder Meeting. And again, this just gave our partner agencies that additional uh, opportunity to stay up to date on community resources and uh, to maintain those relationships so we can collaborate to help our veterans in need. Uh, in 2019, we joined the Florida Veterans Support Line Network. 
Uh, this is in partnership with the Department of Veteran Affairs, as well as Tampa Bay Crisis Center. Uh, this program allows us to offer that peer support and that veteran care coordination to be accessible across the whole state. And that's through our two-on-one systems. Um, there, there's two ways you can get through to a veteran care coordinator, um, and that's by just simply dialing 211. Um, and, you know, you, you, we're provided, we provide our resources, and anytime you need that peer support, you can ask for Mission United, and you can speak to a veteran care coordinator, um, or you can dial 1 uh, 844 and that is the Florida Veterans Support Line. In 2020, uh, our statewide veteran care coordination services were actually signed into state legislation. And that just shows um, how impactful the service uh, has been to, uh, across the state of Florida. So um, we do uh, a stakeholder meeting. Uh, it's bi-monthly, it's every other month. We do six of them throughout the year. We have about 35 members from key agencies and community services that join. Um, out, of, out of those groups, uh, our sponsors attend these stakeholder meetings, as well as uh, Lee County and Bay Pines VA, our local vet centers, uh, Lee County Human and Veteran Services, Jewish Family and Children's Services, Lee Health, American Red Cross, the list goes on. Um, and we share a lot of just, just some of the information that um, we gather through our calls uh, just about our veteran population. So our community is aware of some of the needs and uh, folks in the area that are looking for help. Uh, so last year in 2020, we served uh, 1,803 veterans. These are non-duplicated calls. And out of, out of those 1,803, their top five needs were electric, rent, tax preparation, food, and water. And then we were able to, uh, just through community collaboration, we were able to fill gaps in services for 95 households. That's huge, um, knowing that th this, is, this is our mission. We're coming together, we are um, communicating amongst agencies to problem solve some pretty complex cases. So that was rewarding to be able to help that household. Um, we do have some statistics about uh, the type of veterans we're serving. As you can see, um, we have a pretty high population of uh, veterans over the age of 62, um, a really uh, a high population of army veterans, and uh, again, it's that Vietnam and post-Vietnam era veterans that are in our area. But out of these 1,803 veterans that we spoke through through our 211 helpline, uh, we were able to enroll 249 veterans into care coordination last year. And so I, I did wanna share a little bit about uh, just some success stories so you guys get an idea of our process. Um, uh, we had a, a wife of a Vietnam veteran who called 211. She was seeking roof repair. It was just, it was such an emotional call. Um, it was right at the start of hurricane season and her whole, or her roof had uh, been damaged due to Irma. So they've been dealing with this for over three years. Um, she spoke with a 211 specialist, uh, and they, they assess the call. They determine, all right, this is a military household. They need roof repair as seniors on fixed income. And they provided them our community resources like Lee Builders Care and Lee County Human and Veteran Services Housing Repair and Rehabilitation Program. Then our community resource specialist completed that 10 day follow up. And from there they learned that the veteran household did not get their need met. Each of our uh, resources in our database have a certain eligibility criteria. And unfortunately in this circumstance, uh, these clients did not meet that eligibility criteria. So they refer them to Mission United and this is where our veteran care coordination comes into place. Uh, our veteran care coordinator completed a more comprehensive assessment. We provided that peer support, um, recognized and tried to diffuse um, the, just some of the clients' um, fears uh, associated with um, having this damaged roof and uh, you know, recognizing they had some pretty severe leaks in their home and it was even causing damage to their, their walls. 
Um, and then we also learned that the husband was recently diagnosed with renal disease. So uh, we advocated with one of our stakeholders, and that was Affordable Homeownership Foundation. And then we also advocated with one of our community sponsors, and we were actually able to get that roof and those walls repaired. Um, they were so grateful and, and telling you it, it feels amazing to be able to help people that are experiencing hardships like that. Um, our next uh, success story was a Vietnam Army veteran. Um, he called 211 and he was actually at the library. He was really agitated um, and he was trying to use their computer, but he, he really lacked um, some of the computer literacy skills. And he spoke with our 211 specialist who recognized, all right, he's in the military and he had this immediate need. So they got... Uh, the veteran right over to Mission United, uh, and we offered that peer support, diffused that situation. We, we've learned that veterans prefer sometimes to speak with other veterans. We speak the same language, and we're, we're sometimes just able to uh, help folks figure out their situation in a, in a more camaraderie type of way. Um, so after we uh, were able to diffuse the situation, we completed that comprehensive assessment and we learned he had this court ordered traffic school um, and he, he was in violation of, um, or he was in violation due to uh, missing his administrative hearing. And so we recognize, all right, this is urgent. We do not want the senior veteran to, you know, have to deal with major legal issues because of computer literacy skills. Um, so we called the library um, and we also called Goodwill Job Links. And unfortunately due to the pandemic, services were really limited. We had those strict CDC guidelines. So we did some additional advocacy. We tried to gain a little more information about a situation through his paralegal and clerk of courts. And then we collaborated with one of our stakeholders, Brotherhood of Heroes Museum and Resource Center, and they allowed us to use their space and even let us use an extra computer. And we scheduled that appointment with that veteran. Um, and once we met with him, we were able to teach him things like how to use your mouse, how to navigate the search engine, how to set up usernames and passwords, even how to just use the keyboard. Um, and we, we don't think about the the challenges folks face or folks face when they are experiencing, um, you know, oh, just oh, trying to overcome some of those limitations. Um, we also reached out to the diversion officer. He was uh, surprised and stated that he was just uh, relieved that there was an agency out there that went above and beyond for veterans. Um, so that was again just another rewarding. Um, situation. And this is, again, just part of our process. Went, went through 211 and then uh, was referred to Mission United. We advocated and until we received a positive outcome. Our, our last story is about a Vietnam Marine Corps veteran. He called 211. His HUD VASH uh, case manager uh, referred him to call us. Uh, knowing that he's in HUD Vash, uh, we know that HUD Vash serves those that uh, were literally homeless. So he had a history of homelessness. And HUD Vash is also a VA program. So we know they're one of our stakeholders. Uh, he was looking for assistance with past due rent and utilities. He uh, spoke with the 211 uh, community resource specialist. Uh, they again learned that he served in the military. There was no evictions in process at this point. So they provided him uh, some of our community resources, including Jewish Family and Children's Start Services, who are a stakeholder, St. Vincent Nepal, Disabled American Veterans Chapter 108, who's also a stakeholder, and Power to Share. Uh, due to uh, HUD VASH being in that HUD VASH program, our community resource specialist just wanted to make sure that. Uh, we kind of had our eyes on a situation. So uh, she went ahead and referred him to Mission United so we could complete those follow-ups. Um, we did make several follow-up attempts. And uh, when the client finally returned his call back to us, uh, unfortunately, an eviction had already been filed through the courts. Um, he had received that five-day notice to respond to the courts. And I'll tell you, once 
evictions get to the court, it is so hard to stop those evictions. Um, but our uh, veteran care coordinator did complete uh, a comprehensive assessment, provided that peer support. And then uh, we reached out to the landlord and we had to negotiate some terms with the landlord for them to even be willing to work with us. Um, but we did uh, work something out and we were able to advocate through a community sponsor. So we ended up stopping that, or stopping that eviction um, and we were able to keep a veteran who had this history of homelessness, we were able to keep him housed. Um, so I know I shared a lot of information. I have a 20 second video for you. Um, so if you just stand by, I just want you to meet our staff. Hi, Sarah. Hi, I'm Danielle, Navy veteran. Hi, I'm Claudia, Army veteran. Hi, I'm Lincoln, Navy veteran. Hi, I'm Flash, Air Force veteran. We are your Florida Veterans Support Line team in Lake County. Let us help you with community-based and VA-funded services. Call us. Call us. Call us. Call us. And that's it. I hope I didn't um, share too much, but again, I'm just excited that we could um, uh, just share with you guys today. I see Kim Gay just joined us. She's she's one of our stakeholders, so it's really nice to. Good morning, Kim. It's um, I, I've been there. I've been listening. Have you? Oh, good. <laughs> good job, Danny and and team. Good job. Well, and Danielle. Oops. No, Danielle, that was absolutely fantastic, and I think you you gave a good idea of what is going on when when we have these calls come in, and that care coordination is key to the success of these veterans. They just, it, it's such a hard navigation process for a lot of these veterans. And unfortunately, the services that are out there were so disjointed. And that really was a big piece of Mission United coming together was to be able to bridge all of these different services and provide that care coordination to help these veterans navigate the system. Um, and, you know, Danny, this may be before your time. I'm not sure, but I, I, I am struck by a story that I remember. And Linda, you might be able to chime in on this. And I remember it was, I, I believe it was a Vietnam veteran or it could have even been a World War II veteran um, who had a caretaker that ended up draining his bank account and he didn't even know it. And the electric was getting ready to be turned off and all of this other stuff was about ready to happen. Um, and, you know, he was going to get that next check, but we had to bridge the gap between his bank account being cleared out and him. And I remember distinctly that it was so hard for him to call and ask for help because we were talking about a generation that really, you know, you're supposed to stand on your own. You need to provide, you need to take care of yourself. And I think that's a veteran mentality in essence, not just an age or a generational thing. And so, you know, the fact that he was able to call and have somebody who, you know, not only understood his reluctance to call, but was compassionate and caring and really wanted to advocate for him. And Linda, I don't know if you want to add anything more to that story. I just, I remember that one sticking out so well. Yes, there's um, many stories and yes, um, that, that, is, that was um, a true story. And um, when, as you hear Danny talk about um, what, what they're doing at Mission United between her and her team, um, it is amazing. Uh, you can hear the passion. Um, veteran to veteran, uh, when they call, uh, they are able to relate. Um, there's all the emotions that come with every caller as well, whether it be um, tears in your first story, um, uh, just that part was not uh, shared, but the uh, wife, when she called, was very upset and she was crying um, and had a lot going on. And so not only do they um, assess the situation, but they have to be empathetic and they have to stop. And they, sometimes there's anger and they have to diffuse the anger to get past the anger so that we can dissect the situation and see how we can help. And um, Danny and her team are doing an amazing job. And obviously with the support of our statewide um, My Florida Vet program, we have um, lots of camaraderie, lots of support statewide as well. So um, they're just doing an amazing, amazing job. And um, the care coordination piece is what we are so proud of because that is the assessment, that is education, that is advocacy. 
And it's not just one phone call, as you hear from these stories that were shared. It's multiple store. It's multiple phone calls over multiple days um, in order to solve some of these situations and collaboratively work together in a community. So, uh, Danny, thank you to you and your team. You're doing an amazing job. And Danny, I know you mentioned the eviction process, and once it starts, um, it's really hard to stop that. So that was phenomenal that you guys were able to stop it once it got to the court system. But if you could just take a moment to explain. You know, when someone is in HUD Vash, if you do get evicted, are, you're basically out of the program, right? I mean, there's it, it's a point of no return. Well, and yeah, there's there's a couple issues, but you could lose that that voucher, and that you know that that's the worst case that we want to see for veterans, especially those that are in HUD Vash. I mean, programs like that, you're looking at folks that may have um, mental health or may have uh, other challenges that they've continued to face in their life. So we want to do everything we can to keep them stabilized as long as we can. And I know that video that you put together was um, for the efforts of this being Suicide um, Awareness Prevention Month, I believe. Um, you know, is that something that, and I know, it's prevalent and it's becoming more prevalent just in general in our population, but in veterans, is that something that's overly concerning for your group? It is. Um, they have, uh, they've put out different statistics um, throughout the years that on average, it's about 22 veterans a day that um, commit suicide. And it is something that uh, our our veteran subculture has to, um, we have to face, we've lost a lot of friends and um, brothers and sisters in arms to suicide. It's tough. Um, I, I can stay, I've, I've lost people. And it's, it, what, it's really what I know personally drives me to, to be a part of this program. Um, and continue to help uh, veterans that uh, are, have challenges. You know, you're, you're taking, um, we all have those life challenges, and then you couple that with the transition out of the military service. It's a culture shock in itself. And then you're dealing with things like post-traumatic stress disorder, um, and that could be um, either combat related or it could be related to something personal that happened in the military. And so all of these things together, it, it, it can be a challenge. And then you deal with, let's say, um, the Vietnam era veterans. They really suffered when they got out and then they're now suffering as they're older due to Agent Orange. So now they're having major medical issues. So there's all these different components um, that we really try to do almost a holistic approach to helping veterans. And that's why it's amazing to be integrated in the two-on-one system because we have over 1200 resources in our database. And so we're able to do those comprehensive assessments and get folks to all the agencies in the community. Mission United just kind of does that extra step where if there is for some reason, no resource in the community, we're gonna work with our community partners and our stakeholders like Kim down here. Um, sorry, you're down on my screen. <laughs> We're going to work with Kim um, and work with all these other agencies. And if we can't um, figure it out that way, we'll try to contact a community sponsor and we try to fill that gap. Um, it is, you know, it, it can be very difficult um, to go through all of uh, these challenges on your own. So having that peer support is so beneficial um, to get through. The hard, the hard stuff. Well, and I know this, this probably isn't, well, I know it's not easy on your team as well, because you all are hearing from your peers on a daily basis on their challenges and just trying to help them the best that you can. So I'm proud of your team for everything you're doing for our veterans in the community, your care coordination, and just your overall passion for making sure our veterans get the help that they need. So thank you for that. Do we have any questions on the program at all? So seeing none, um, what I would like to remind everyone is, you know, one of the biggest hurdles I think with our veterans is just getting them to pick up that phone and call. They, they've 
you know, when you're in the military, you're trained not to ask for help, right? You have to be self-sufficient. You have, you know, you're supposed to take care of yourself. And so, you know, generational things and just the culture of the military, um, what we're asking all of you today to do is if you leave with anything today, it's to remember that 211 number, that 211 number by simply dialing 211 will connect anyone in need to the resources that are available, but especially our veterans and our active military families. Um, If they call that number, they can be connected to Mission United through the 211 system. They will get the empathy, the the caring, the resources that they need to address their issue. And so we just hope all of you will remember that, continue to share the 211 number with anyone you may know in the community. So thank you again for joining us today for Coffee Chats. Um, We'll be back again next week, and we hope you'll join us then. There will also be a recording of this on our on our website. So if you know someone who could really use this information, if you give us about 24 hours, you'll see that on our website, that link, and you can share it with anyone who you think may need the, this service. So thank you all so much and live united. Thank you. Thank you all. Great program.